Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 117 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net Let's get right to it First one's called NASA Discovers South Park Character Mr. Hankey the Christmas Pooh on Jupiter And that was run by the Huffington Post and that is the title of the same name. Again, just another space reinforcement story. They don't even really care if you read the article as long as you glance at the title or maybe even look at the image. And by that, I mean it's just the same drumbeat, meaning no matter what story it is out in space, you're on a globe. Whatever's happening on Mars, you're on a globe. Jupiter, globe. Reclassifying Pluto looking at distant galaxies, what, you know, an artist, even every single artist's rendition of whatever space story is out there. It's all for the same thing. You're on a globe. You're trapped. You're an insignificant piece of scientific material flying around space. This one's called Just Subscribed and Left a Voicemail 2. Uh, and having a hard time accessing content. Hello, Mark. Your clues were the gateway I entered and what a ride it has been since. Was at the conference in Raleigh in 2017. Look forward to com combing your website. Would love to get some help putting together a 5 to 10 minute video with 10 to 15 questions and supporting pictures or short clips that can help people without triggering them. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. And oh my goodness, how they get triggered. There may be something like this already available, but I think it would be very valuable to offer to our community something that they could share or send that has a chance to break through the group think and brainwashing and get them to consider some basic observations and obvious deception. My list might include, and there's a list of, of questions here, and I'll just rattle through them real quick, and I won't answer them. Uh, uh, one, why does an amateur balloon show this from 120,000 feet while NASA shows this? If boats go over the, over the curve of the horizon in three to eight miles, and if that curve continues at an accepted rate of eight inches per mile squared, why can we see the complete Chicago skyline from 55 miles away with 1,666 feet of curvature missing? Why are the Valen Allen belts a problem now? And they weren't in the six manned moon missions, yeah. Why are there bubbles in, and scuba gear in spacewalk videos, yep. Yeah. How is that we don't have the technology today to go to the moon, yet we did so with 60s technology five times? Excellent. Why do the pictures of the Earth keep showing wildly different sized continents? Also good. Why do these astronauts, fresh back from a successful first ever trip to the moon, look and act like this? And he's talking about the international press conference from the late 60s. If the Earth spins at 1,000 miles an hour and have all these other crazy speeds around the sun, galaxy, and universe, why do the stars do this? Star trails, time lapse. Yep, no parallax. My wife and I have called for a detente in talking about these things, but got into it this morning. She thinks I am in the cult, but of course... It is she and most of humanity who are in the cult, but that is another hard point to dig it on. Glad you're in the mix. Let me know what I need to do to get the web page operative. It shows me as logged in, but when I try to open any of the tabs on the left side of the page, it says I must purchase a monthly subscription, which I thought I did. Maybe I did not go. Oh, boy. Okay, so anyone that's trying to log into MarkSargent.com, I haven't been affiliated with that thing for a couple of years. That was just some low-end producer out of San Diego named Joe Real, who wanted to do MarkSargent.com. And I said, do I have to do anything? No. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll make a subscription subscription site and I'll give you half the money. They didn't give me anything and I haven't heard from the guy. And I said, in fact, I asked him at one point, because uh, Peanut Gallery said, hey, maybe you should just buy back MarkSargent.com from, from him because I never did own it. And I called him up. He goes, yeah, $5,000. I was going, yeah, whatever, get bent. So I will message this guy and let him know to not subscribe. Nobody, I'm, I'm not charging for anything, guys. So if you have to pay to get my content, you're, you're in the wrong place. I mean, if you want to pay for the content, that's great. It's your money, but uh, I have nothing to do with it. This one's called ISS Accused by Italy and Russian of Being Underwater. 
Hello, Mark. I have a researcher and writer living in North Carolina. I found something interesting regarding the ISS I haven't heard mentioned before. Maybe it's news to you. Obviously, you know about the space bubbles and the NASA ISS training pool. But did you catch how on each NASA anniversary, a foreign country publicly accused the ISS of being underwater? It happened twice. On July 16th, 2013, the anniversary of Apollo 11 launch, an Italian astronaut reported that nearly, he nearly drowned while on a spacewalk in a spacesuit. Yeah, it's true. Uh, on August 20th, the anniversary of NASA landing on Mars. <laughs> Whatever. Wait, what anniversary? What, 10 year? It doesn't matter. Uh, Russian astronauts reported sea plankton in the windows of the International Space Station. Yeah, that makes total sense. It goes even further when you read the explanation by NASA biologists who respond to the Russian astronauts' accusations by saying it's simply microscopic water beads in space. Get it? Uh, the time, Wait, bears? Microscopic water bears in space? Get it? Oh, Russians are bears. The tiny bears were no problem. It's like a sort of code, I think. I wanted someone with an audience to notice these dates and maybe incorporate it to your own research. It gives us a perspective on how our world is being controlled by several countries working together in plain sight. I write about all this in my latest article, The, La the Litany of Space. Not that you need to read it. You probably know most of the rest. And there's a link to it. Keep up the great work. And that's from James. P.S. I do podcasts. If you're ever looking for someone to be a guest on your show right now, I am writing a novel about Flat Earth and it involves a ton of satellite research. This is how I found Flat Earth. Actually, I'm currently stumped by satellite Doppler shift. We can detect it, which suggests they are real. Maybe you know more about this. Well, again, satellites might be up there, but they're not being sent up by rockets and they're not transmitting a whole lot of bandwidth. That's for sure. This one's called I Am Looking for a Sincere Friendships. That sounds legit. Hello, no name. I'm impressed by your profile picture. Uh, what, what, what picture is that? I'm looking for a sincere friendships of mature men, hopefully married. I would like to us to know each other better. Here is my email address so I can send my photos and more details about me. Okay. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to write back to this person. I, I would love a sincere friendship with what appears to be a female from another country. This one's called Flat Earth and the Sun. Mark, I love your show and videos. I have a question I'm not sure anyone has ever asked, so here it is. If the sun is 93 million miles away and its light can be seen throughout the so-called Milky Way, how is there darkness? Oh, boy. We should never experience darkness ever. That's all right. I'm, I'm not even going to answer it, but I'm going to read it. Uh, even as we rotated our side away from the sun, the rays of light would still be seen through the sky. And if it should only be dusk, we'd never see stars because the sun's light would be brighter than the stars. This would be easy to prove by using a large lumen light. There you go. And a basketball with a camera mounted to it outside at night. There's your problem. A large lumen light. It's not large. It's really, really small. This question came to me one day. I was blown away. I thought I'd bring to you. That's from Paul in Steubenville, Ohio. Yep. Paul is on his way to going down the flat earth madness rabbit hole. Uh, this is an interesting one. Hi from the UK and it's from the real hat fits and it's a, it's a woman out of the, uh, the UK, I believe. And she wrote some lyrics to a flat earth song, which I, I recently put on my, uh, my playlist, my flat earth music playlist. And I'd like to read you the lyrics real quick. And they rhyme. Uh, and it says, Mark, I changed the title earlier. Yeah, she didn't. By the way, a little reminder, if anyone's going to make a, a brand new Flat Earth video or open up your channel and, and make videos, put Flat Earth in the title somewhere. You'll notice that in 99% of my videos, Flat Earth is in the title somewhere. Even if it's a not a Flat Earth video, I'll say not a Flat Earth video so that it shows up in the metrics over and over again. Anyway, so she writes, well, I just changed the title earlier. And I was just putting it in the song lyrics, but the YouTube update button had gone gray. And it won't let me do it for some reason. So here are the lyrics for now, and hopefully I'll add them soon. Well, sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water and I think of all the lies that were told. Then I take a Nikon picture. Because since I've come on home to Flat Earth, I've been blessed. I don't miss the globe and I've done the Flat Earth tests. NASA, man, it's over. Stop making a fool out of me. Why don't you call it quits? Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. 
You had us all in jail, but the truth always prevails, and spreads like a fire, and there is a divine plan, but every woman, every man, must come together. And awaken anywhere, and let go of the despair, and the confusion, and remember we're divine, live in the now, step out of time, and find solutions. Because since I've come on home to flat earth, I have been blessed. I don't miss the globe, and I've done the flat earth tests. NASA, man, it's over. Stop making a fool out of me. Why don't you call it quits? Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. Why don't you call it quits? And stop lying to me. It's nice. It's good. Thank you for that. This one's called Neat Rainbow Image That Looks Like the Dome. Yep. And uh, yeah, just about all rainbow images. In fact, you don't even need a, a fisheye lens to, to take that. And yeah, anyone that can look these up. In fact, if you want to look up some really, and that's from Steve. Thank you for that. Uh, if you want to look some up, up some neat images, uh, type in, or videos, type in uh, rainbow from a helicopter. Because it's not just when you look at it from the side, it's a dome. If you go over it with a helicopter, it looks like a complete dome from looking down. You're like you're looking down at a giant sports stadium. That's really, really cool. And you got to ask yourself how that gets made. I mean, the, the one, the, looking at it from down the ground, you can see, you, the scientists will give you all these different perspective things. It's like, well, it'll always look like this no matter what. It's just this weird angle of refraction and lensing. But when you go over the top of it with a uh, helicopter, you see something completely different. It's fascinating. This one's called Video I Really Liked. Mark, I watched this compilation video last night. It's done similarly to your clues, in which the author does five to ten minute episodes, but this one is 23 episodes smashed together. It seems like the guy is still going on a complete series, but I stumbled across it and wanted to send it to you. I think others, others flatties, no, other flatties, should watch it too, as it gives a pretty crazy yet surprisingly simple model concept of the flat earth. I absolutely love this concept of the sun being literally a focal point of light and that the firmament is the sky. There is a doomsday aspect to the thing too, but he doesn't put it out of fear, but rather for informing people who actually want to listen and see. Anyway, please share this on an email, read video, so as many of your listeners can watch it that desire more knowledge. Thanks, and keep up your badassery. I'm going to listen to last night's Strange World. Also, if you and Owen Benjamin talk... Holy crap, would it be cool. It's funny, I stumbled upon one of his videos about two weeks before I saw one of yours, and now he's becoming one of us. I'd like to witness you helping him along. Uh, thank you for that. And I, I don't know, he may talk to me, he may not. He already subscribes to ODD, who thinks I'm a government agent. And uh, he also likes Eric Dubay, who also thinks I'm a government agent. So, yeah. And if it, by the way, if anyone wants... If everyone's still listening to this and still thinks, uh, think I'm a government agent, I will send you something. If you email me and say, I think you're an agent, prove me wrong, I will send you something through WeTransfer that should squash that. And uh, so please feel free to email me and I will, I will shoot it off to you. It takes a little while to download, but you'll get my point. So anyway, thank you for that email. This one's called Arion's latest satellite launch to usher in a new era of global aircraft surveillance. Hi, Mark and Jaron. Just so you know, it's every once in a while I'll get emails that are sent to multiple people or I will be copied on stuff. I get just about everybody at the conference. There, there, there's certain people that will email everybody uh, in, in, in certain circles. Um, hi, Mark and Jaron. Just saw this tonight. It's on it's a space article. Yep, uh, the new era of global aircraft surveillance. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. And that was sent by J Nine. Come on, guys, use your real names. I use my real name. What are you afraid of? This one's called Question Mark. My apologies, I'm new to this. A question: If Antarctica is the edge, why is there only one edge? I'm trying to make sense of it. Can you help me out? <sighs> okay, again, if you are sitting in the middle of a lake, you're a boat in the middle of the lake. What is the outside edge of that lake called? It's called whatever that landmass is in any direction. So in this case, Antarctica is one direction north. It could be south, east, west. No matter where you go, you are going to run into the Antarctic coastline. There you go. You got it. Look at, look at the flat earth map. Come on. You should know this by now. 
I'm not yelling. I'm just saying. This is called Owen Benjamin and Eric DeBay Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I listened to the entire podcast Owen Benjamin did on the 16th of January. I would recommend leaving him alone. Eric and Owen do great together with their Jew bashing. I cringe when he starts on his Jew rants and wants to comment, but it... Uh, and oh, he, he, you want to want comment, but it won't do any good. I appreciate all this work you have done and do not want your name drug through the mud uh, being a, a born again Christian. Owen thinks Flat Earth is a CIA psyop. Thoughts in this Owen guy, Matt Boylan and Owen might be con might be controlled. Uh, how he, he is Jew bashing, wanting to talk to Dubay instead of him. Uh, P.S. In the movie Smallfoot, LeBron James plays the purple truth or Bigfoot. Remember how LeBron was already talking to the news about Kyrie and Flat Earth. Yeah, good point. I didn't know LeBron James did a voiceover in, in Small Smallfoot. Um, yeah, when it comes to Owen, uh, yeah, he does do. Go, but it, but the thing is, since his grandmother was Jewish, I think he's he's using that as like, oh, I can get away with it type thing. So I don't know. I, 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 plus the, the Eric thing hasn't even been scheduled, hasn't happened. So I don't know why it hasn't happened. And I, I, I put a feeler out to him quietly. I didn't do it in the chat. I, I sent him a nice email, very short, saying, look, more than willing to talk to you. Because I, he may live uh, somewhere close to here, uh, in, you know, in the Northwest. That, that was the rumor. I'm not sure yet, though. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I have looked everywhere for someone who wants to know whether the land we live on is actually a flat plane. The theories abound, but I cannot find the simple truth. When I mention this to anyone, they lose their... <laughs> they lose it fast. You know, the devil you know is safer than the devil you don't. And the jail cell you were trapped in became your safety blanket hmm good nevertheless be careful yelling fire in a crowded th wow can you throw any more sayings out there yelling fire in a crowded theater will cause panic if you seriously scare the cows <laughs> wow you are just this is one after another and cause a stampede things will really get uh screwed up uh i will end with if you can prove the flat plain truth anywhere anytime oh you can but telling the populace will just bring out a new level of mad cow disease. <laughs> Regards, David. David Ad Adamson. Uh, awesome. It's, I, I love all your references there. Uh, but again, I think that we have a chance to, to use Flat Earth to our advantage and turn it potentially into a new golden age. So I'm not stopping until I am dead. This one's called Documentary. Mark, uh, it uh, was a surprising piece of work which left the Flat Earth Globe debate up for grabs. And, oh, this guy watched the documentary uh, Behind the Curve. And you, by the way, you guys can stream it anywhere. I think you can, like four bucks. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime and Google Play and iTunes and YouTube. Uh, anyway, he says, was um, Behind the Curve was a surprising piece of work which left the Flat Earth Globe uh, debate up for grabs in many respects. I expected more of the typical open and shut case, though I appreciated its humility and humanity. Whatever came of the test with a $20,000 gyro. All the best, John. I don't know where that stands currently. You're going to have to email Globusters and ask them. They were the ones in control of that one. I had nothing to do with the gyro test, although I liked what they did. This one's called A Response to Your Expert Military Witnesses. Ooh, sounds like a potential troll email. Greetings, Mark. I have followed the FE movement for a little while now and discussed it on Facebook in Flat Earth Groups, listened to some of your videos, and seen FE proof videos online. I have to say, if I had not studied space, oh, here we go. If I had not studied space my entire life, then gone to school for aerospace engineering and ended up working in the satellite missions for the military, I have, may have fallen for this FE stuff as well. Oh, 
I'm loving this. Basically, he's saying, I've been so indoctrinated, there is no way I'm ever going to flat earth. And uh, yep, so let's let's read the rest of this. I am not surprised that your expert military witnesses do not understand space, their communications equipment, and other weapon systems capabilities that use, utilize space-borne assets. I have actually run into this a couple of times with military personnel while in the Air Force. Unfortunately, since space is made to be very seamless and easy to the operational war fighters, they really have no appreciation or good understanding of how the space assets play in their missions, but it really is not required. It is even more understandable when some of the information is is classified beyond their level. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, if you look at the MILSATCOM or GPS, these missions are not classified and are the main systems that warfighters use for communications and navigation. I have tried over the past few months to provide proofs on forums uh, with images, live satellite feeds with other countries, globe videos and even my own personal testimony as a Christian globalist who actually worked on space missions. Okay, wow, you are in real trouble now because you're, you're actually a Christian globalist. Even though the Bible is a flat earth book, please, by all means. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I'm, 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 I'm editing here. Okay, um, let me let me finish. Nothing works. The NASA conspiracy, misunderstanding of biblical texts. Uh huh. Yeah. Where, where are you going to go? Isaiah 40, 22? And the inability for anyone to really be able to see the curve while on Earth or even from high altitude keeps many in the flat Earth camp. If I ever figure out a very convincing way to show you all, I will let you know. I even thought that maybe you or another notable flat Earth would actually lobby to go up to space when Elon Musk finally opens it up for commercial transportation. Who knows? Thanks for all your time and search for the truth. And that's from William Austin. Oh, I I don't even know where to start with this video. Or I'm sorry, it was start with this um, this letter. He he states again up front that he is completely indoctrinated with um, w w what do you say here? Studied space his entire life, went to aerospace engineering, and he works in the satellite on satellite missions for the military. He's basically he's he's saying that every military subject matter expert I had is doing it wrong, even though most of them aren't even using satellite based systems. Uh, and and where uh, that includes uh, you know the tanks and the artillery pieces that are just firing you know or the guys that are just going ship to ship they're 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 using direct beam radar you know two degree beam radar they're they're not accessing any satellite systems and then he goes on and says oh yeah by the way I'm a Christian but I absolutely believe the globe oh okay please by all means that that's a whole nother wing. Call up Rob Skiba or Robbie Davidson or Zen Garcia or all, all these guys that have gone through chapter and verse with a fine tooth comb and said there is only one verse in the entire Bible that even hints that it might be spherical, even hints. And that's Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And there are pastors all over the country that are trying to use that verse as veto power or over everything like, I don't know, Isaiah and Genesis yeah, because, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah, uh, oh, sorry, I, I can't can't do this one anymore. It, there's nothing he can do. Look, uh, the subject matter expert list that I have is long and varied. And nobody's recanted, and nobody has even gone rec on record. By all, by all means, make a video, William Austin. Make a video against Flat Earth, and put it on YouTube. And just please tell us all the military experts are wrong. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Seriously, moving on. This one's called Potential Interview, Getting to Know the Flat Earth Community. Hello, Mark. My name is Nick, and I am currently trying to finish up my undergraduate degree in psychology and sociology at Western Washington University. Ah, my old stomping grounds. In order to finish up the sociology portion of my degree, I have to write a research paper on interviews I have with members of a community I do not belong to. I decided to interview members of the Flat Earth community for two reasons. The first is because I only recently found out about the Flat Earth community, and also because it is a unique identity that I imagine has many fascinating social aspects to it. Oh, Nick, you have no idea. I was sent in your direction after asking around a few FE subreddits and was hoping I could eventually talk to you for about an hour regarding an hour, only an hour. Uh, let's see how that goes. Uh, regarding what it means to you to be in the Flat Earth community. 
Other conversation topics would include your social circle and history with the Flat Earth community. If this sounds like something you would be willing to do, please let me know. I will happily answer any questions you may have regarding the project as well as how I will protect your privacy if you choose to participate. Hope to hear from you soon, Nick. And no, my privacy is not an issue. At this point, I am out there uh, everywhere with my full name, my address, my phone number, uh, tons of images of me, so no worries there. So I'm going to be, and I already respond to this guy, so I'm going to be interviewing with him, I think, tomorrow. And yeah, let's cover Flat Earth in an hour. That'll work. I love when people do, oh yeah, we should be able to wrap this up in an hour. And then two hours later, like, yeah, we're going to have to do another phone call. This one's called Russia in Tatarzan. Mark, thank you for the uniqueness of the, the, of the information. Oh, I get it. He's Russian. Thank you for the uniqueness of the information. What can I serve? I live in Russia, Tatarsan. I learned this truth. The whole truth about the world will be revealed soon. And I cannot even begin to pronounce that name because it is all in Russian. So thank you for that. And good luck in Tatar, Tatarstan. Tatar. I, I, I don't know a lot of Russian cities, but I really don't know that one. T-A-T-A-R-S-T-A-N. So, there you go. Thank you for that. You know what? I'm going to put that in my to-do pile. This one's called Flat Earth Simon Dan's A Wanker, a Flat Earth song funny. And that was sent to me by Eric, yeah, let's see what he's got here. Let's see if that song is still up. Yep, Flat Earth Simon Dan's a waker, wanker, Flat Earth song, funny. And that's from Tyler432. That's his YouTube channel. And it's got, uh, it doesn't have a lot of views because he's only got 300 subs. It's got 11 comments. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to give it a thumbs up because I hadn't already. So cool. Moving on, this one's called Artificial Meteor Shower in China. Artificial Meteor in Shower? Okay, I'm curious. It's a YouTube link. And let's see. What's it called? It's called Sky Canvas Satellite Aiming to Create Earth's First Artificial Meteor Shower. Why would you do this? And that's from Dabu uh, 77 and uh, I remember Dabu. I haven't watched some of his stuff in a while. He's got 400,000 subs now. Wow. And 229 comments. Yeah, people are saying, yeah, it's like Project... Yeah, it's more likely a, plot, a Project Bluebeam thing. But that is very, very interesting. This one's called NASA is shut down. This is what happens when Trump gets Intel Earth is not a globe. And NASA closed .mp4 by Chad Swans. Thank you. And I will I will check that out. I will download that file. I will put that in my to-do thing. And one sec. This one's called comment. Hey, Mark, I saw the piece of National Geographic where you were submitting to a moronic interrogation by some blonde reporter, if you can call her that, questioning Flat Earth doubting 2,000 years of science. Why can't you answer with a little contempt or contempt or authority or, for example, by telling her that if science was so obviously correct, then why is she there bothering in the first place asking all these stupid questions? It's time you get a little more aggressive and question them instead of always being Mr. Nice Guy or take a stand. Just don't be a pushover and please spare me your replying saying I'm a jerk. <laughs> Nice. Well, at least you know that you're coming at me strong here. Live or die by the sword if you are so sure of your beliefs, and please don't just sit there uh, for the trollers sounding like a timid leader, which is what you're supposed to be known for. That's all. Thanks. And that's from Albert. Uh, yeah, I've gotten a few. Of, I've gotten a few emails like this. I mean, you got to remember, I, there's nothing I can do to defend myself with National Geographic because they edited everything out. For, you forget, that piece was only, what, 10 minutes long? And we shot literally for three days. Uh, they were with me during the entire meetup and then after the meetup, and then we, we talked quite a bit the next day, and then we spent literally just hours and hours and hours at the Salton Sea, and I was talking until my voice started cracking. 
uh, you know, all sorts of rebuttals, uh, huge amounts. I mean, every uh, condemning the test in every way, shape, or form, condemning the test before we did it. In fact, I they even left out the fact that they you know they paid for me to come down you know they it was an all expenses paid trip and i did not that was the only reason i went because the i told them i go i do not want to go to this thing it's a terrible test i i don't want to be a part of it in any way any way and they uh we when we got there the the test was delayed and delayed and then it was the middle of the day by the time the test was going along and I was condemning, I was going, look, there's mountains in the distance you cannot see anymore because the, the atmospheric refraction, atmospheric lensing Fata Morgana effect is so thick. It was just getting ridiculous. In fact, they even scrapped the balloon stuff. That If you guys want to have some fun, uh, type in Flat Earth Salton Sea, you know, because we, we released all the raw footage. You know, we shot around National Geographic for hours and hours. And we released it, including all the balloon footage. <clears throat> and they cut out the balloon experiment entirely. The The backup experiment was the raft going out at whatever, three miles, four miles. And uh, they didn't even, uh, I, I, you know, when National Geographic was laying out the test, they didn't even give details of the test. They didn't even give, you know, how far the raft was, you know, with how the, the stripes. They didn't give any technical details at all. It was so no. I we, you saw what you saw me doing there. That was the 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 weakest stuff that I could I could bring because everything else was edited out. I was yelling. In fact, there was this great line. What you were just saying there. There was this great line when I was talking to uh, Jim Underdown. I think that was his name, Jim Underdown. Where I I told him on camera. I go and look. I go. You get. I go. I go. Why do you think this camera team's here? We're not. You know, they're not here because Flat Earth is losing. And he was like, rah, 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 you know, it's like, whatever. I mean, he knows flat earth just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and same, same with National Geographic. The whole point National Geographic paid to do this piece was because they were trying to, it wasn't necessarily to discredit flat earth. It was a, it was a wake up call to science because they know that science isn't responding. I, I had this wonderful conversation uh, with the woman at the end of the, the show where everyone else was gone. It was just she, her and I and the cameras. We were talking for 30 minutes and they used, I think all of 20 seconds of it where they were just hoping that science would get off their asses and make some sort of defense against flat earth. And I don't know if it's going to work. So far, we haven't really seen anything. But anyway, thank you for your concern. Don't worry about it. I'm on. You know, I can only do what I can. I am at the whim. You know, you sign off the disclosure thing. I am at the whim of the, the editing. You do not have any power over uh, how they edit the piece. Uh, unless you're doing like a, a local newspaper story, then maybe you might have influence. But when it comes to network television, you have no, they won't even talk to you if you won't sign the form saying, no, we get to, you know, you say whatever and we can edit anything out of context or just leave stuff out entirely. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. But do watch the National Geographic thing. I think it's currently number one on the, on the Flat Earth rankings. Uh, it's got a couple hundred thousand hits and uh, we'll see. I don't think they're going to pull it because it's not as neutral as the CBS piece, which was pulled after it already had a million hits. Moving on. This one's called Q&A, The Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. It's John Clinton O'Neill here. I hope all is well and a hug hello to the Flat Earth community. It's been a while since I wrote in. I know my last email was far too big and I appreciate you reading it out for me. I have something very interesting to yourself and the listeners. I remember you saying that you were in the game design. Yes, I was. I'm a huge gamer myself and I use various 3D programs to design buildings and maps. I also like to alter my games, especially open world ones. Well, who doesn't? Now, here we go. I do believe the whole thing we are living on is artificial and what made it more interesting is I watched YouTube channel UAP. He does his own analysis and explains how throughout history the planet has been reset many times and it reminds me of a simulation game such as SimCity when we can just wipe the map and start again in an enclosed sort of map where there are, uh, there are limits at either edge. And the more I look around, the more I see evidence of this. Tell me your thoughts. Oh, and I think we should have some flat earth emojis for our mobiles. Oh, it's good. I would like to thank you for reading. May the flat earth be with you. <clears throat> okay. 
uh, and I talked about this last show, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, one of the reasons I don't go into the virtual reality side of my beliefs is because the average person can't understand it. And I'm not saying that people are listening here are dumb in any sort of way. It's just that most people uh, ingest junk food media. You memorize uh, quarterback ratings and who are the, the finalists on The Voice and who the Kardashians are married to. But when it comes to um, software development, most people don't care. You know, leave the nerdy stuff to the nerds. And <clears throat> I was I was absolutely one of those nerds. And software development is something I dabbled in. And I was a, a game producer for several years uh, out in Colorado. And I, you know, plus I lived and breathed games. I love them so much. And uh, the things you see out there in the world, yes, a lot of them hint towards games. I won't get into too many details. If you want to look up three things, one would be the, obviously the double slit experiment, not the old version, but the new versions with the single electron guns. The um, neuroscience versus uh, free will. That's a, that's a fantastic scientific study which talks about predestination, and that is we not only may be living in some sort of 3D reality, but a 3D movie where the path has already been chosen. That gets really, really interesting. And then, of course, quantum entanglement, which deals with uh, the, the stuff outside of the game, the admin tools, which is that there are things way, way faster than the speed of light, which science says shouldn't be possible. But when you look into quantum entanglement, and I, I mentioned it last because you probably should look at it last because quantum entanglement really screws with your head. Uh, but definitely the first two. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't. And the reason why I don't bring it up more is because the average person is never going to understand uh, virtual reality. Because unless you get unless you're into software. Yeah, people play games. It's like, oh, well, it's not real. Yeah, but you don't understand why it's not real. You're, why it convinces your mind that it is real. And the, again, why I don't explain it to people is for the same reason uh, uh, we don't explain microwave ovens to people. Uh, microwave ovens have been around since the 1970s, and 99% of the people walking on the street use them and have no idea how they work. No idea. And you say, well, well yeah, we don't have, have, know how smartphones work. It's like, no, no, no. Microwave ovens have been around since the 70s, and your average person does not know the the principles the physics involved in how and how they work and it's because we just take things for granted and the same so flat earth the reason why flat earth works so well is it's simple you start with flat earth then you it's enclosed and if it's enclosed it's probably virtual but i don't even bother with that we'll we'll deal with that when we have to deal with that right now it's flat it's enclosed that's where i go and if people want to talk about it like you, fine, great, I'll, I'll talk about it. Uh, but you tr look, Flat Earth already blows people's minds. If you're if, Once you jump from Flat Earth to virtual reality, there's a lot of people who just cannot take it. So I don't really bring it up. But yes, all the indicators out there, uh, and especially if you're into so software development, if, and again, I'll end it on this, which is if you know someone who's a software developer, Ask them about the double slit experiment and what they think it means in regards to reality. And they'll tell you. And it, it, it creeps people out. I mean, seriously, try to try to mention, ask any scientist how to explain the double slit experiment without using the word magic. And they'll say, well, it's repeatable. So it's science. It's like, no, 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 no. Just because it's repeatable doesn't mean you understand it. Uh, anyway, so that's all I want to say about that. This one's called Under the Dome. Hi, Mark. My name is Emily. And I'm a huge conspiracy theorist. I just came across your documentary and it was amazing. I've been showing everyone this video and still try to think and still try. Oof, grammar, people. This video and try still think I'm crazy, but I'm glad someone else out there is completely brainwashed. <laughs> That's from Emmett. Well, Emily. It's weird. Emmett, I wonder if she's using her husband's account. Doesn't really matter. This one's called Interesting Video. Mark, after watching this, I thought of you at Globebusters. There are concepts, wait, at Globebusters? There are concepts presented here that may explain some of what we're contemplating. Some of it makes sense to me. Perhaps you can have him on your show. And it's a link, and it's going to a video called Combined Parts 1 through 23. Oh, yeah, you're the second person, correct? Working model of everything on the flat earth. And that's from Brian Austin Lambert 33. Cool. Very cool. Moving on.
I don't know if I'm going to have Brian Austin Lambert on my show, but we'll see. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Parody Number Four. YouTube, Mark. I'm so sorry. I accidentally didn't address you by name in my original email. Thank you so much for sharing my Carpenter parodies. Teresa, yeah, she makes songs about the flat Earth. And let me go to her YouTube channel so I can get this one right. And I'm pretty sure I've already liked and subbed. Uh, she needs more subs. Her her name is Teresa Leskinen. Uh, Teresa, and then L-E-S-K-I-N-E-N. -E she's only, you know what? I'm going to sub to her. Uh, she's only got a couple subs, but again, it's really tough right now to get into. Uh, if you're starting a new channel, uh, you know, be prepared to, you know, to be underwhelmed when you start because there's so many new people getting into Flat Earth that YouTube just being overwhelmed. Uh, it's tough. I mean, even my stuff where I put out new videos, uh, unless you're already subbed to my channel, you're not even going to see them in like the first four pages. There's just so many, st so many videos coming out every day. Anyway, but check out her channel if you get a chance. She makes some fun uh, Flat Earth parody videos, and I, I love Flat Earth music videos, which is why I have a playlist called Flat Earth Music. And if you make a song, I will put it on there. And there's like hundreds of tracks on there right now. This one's called Delta Golf. Hi, Mark. First of all, I thank God that he shows me this video. My life was was until two months ago without Jesus. Well, I heard from him, but had no connection. Then the wonder happens. A friend asked me to read first John four and Jesus hit me. And then I had a lot of questions, <clears throat> excuse me, but every question were explained right away by praying and reading the Bible. Then the same friend told me of the flat earth. And I thought this man was losing his mind. But I had just a real friend who always speaks the, the right. So I pray to Jesus and ask, let me know about this. And I found your flat earth explanation. So I like to help every Christian by telling, read Genesis 1. Careful, God is always right. And that's from a guy named Richard. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Mark, oh, I'm sorry, this one's called Question. Mark, I'm a couple of years into this now. I was waking up to this about the time when you just started making videos on the subject. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, I emailed you at that time and was impressed with how prompt you were in getting back to me. Thank you for that. I read the Bible minus my preconceived ideas and came up with the flat earth model. Then I get to the fact that we are a plane within a globe-shaped firmament. I see the firmament itself as having depth with what we refer to as outer space actually being between the upper and lower edge of the firmament. I believe the lower edge can be passed through into outer space, the second heaven, if you will. If we could fly as high as the upper edge of the firmament, which I doubt, that is a hard barrier that cannot be passed through. That would take going from dimension to dimension. Anyway, my question is to head north would be heading towards the center of the flat circle. Question mark? Yes. Uh, heading south would then, would then be to head towards the outer rim of the circle. Yes. East and west is to be headed around the circle in opposite directions. Uh, sort of. Uh, the entrance then to the channels of the inner earth at the North Pole are opposed to the south. The outer perimeter can be visualized simply as different locations of entrance from a flat plane. Yeah, okay, I'll go with that. Just trying to visualize things as we are so trained to view things from the perspective of the globe model. By the way, I have become the family kook. They have no idea the paradigm shift, the cognitive dissonance that I myself experienced when the truth started itself in my stared itself in my face, uh, but could not be denied. Looking forward to your response with great anticipation. God bless Wendy. Yeah, all that stuff uh, I think is, is correct. Uh, or close enough to it, why not? Uh, again, there's lots of visual models out there. Uh, lots of people making great visual models. But I would start with the AE map because why not? It's a it's a good uh, foundation. And as far as uh, convincing family members, I still encourage people highly to uh, go out and watch Behind the Curve documentary. <clears throat> because I've sat, I, I had no idea I, until I sat with the, with the audiences when I was doing the film festival stuff on that. I didn't realize that the globalists in the audience, you know, had tons of questions at the end and they stayed for the Q&A. I mean, they had tons of questions uh, and to the point where we were kicked out of several places because they just had to get the, the next movie in. This one's called 167 kilometer microwave link. Hi, Mark. Check this out. 
It's an HTML link. Now, they don't say anything about whether the link was line of sight or if it was bounced off of anything, but they do say direct link and over the sea. The next question is, why couldn't satellites work here? Wouldn't that be simpler? Uh, I haven't been able to find much more info. However, if that is the line of sight, then it is some pretty strong FE evidence. Maybe you or others out there can help find more out about this. Side note, I used to work for a government contractor in mapping in GIS. One neat project was military communications along the Aleutian Islands. That was microwave as well and over long distances. Check it out if interested. Thanks, Dom. Cool, Dom. Huh, that's awesome. I will check that out when I get a chance. This one's called Dear Mark Sargent. Hello, Mark. I am Marshal Kim Jong-un of the DPRK. Our embassy has received some interesting emails regarding Flat Earth. Did you ask your audience to send us the emails? Please reply to us soon. Sincerely, Marshal Kim Jong-un, office at DPRK. Sent from Red Star OSK Desktop EV3 yeah, with a nice little logo, Red Star logo. And I wrote him back. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, but by all means, if you have any questions, ask. I don't care what country they're from. If they have questions about Flat Earth, again, Flat Earth doesn't care about uh, race or gender or religious preference. Flat Earth covers it all. This one's called Blood Moon. Hey, Mark, so I'm in Germany on tour again. Blood Moon apparently is limited to the States. It was full and white as can be all the way over here the bs is so thick i'm glad i have music <laughs> cheers alex yeah i i took a look at the blood moon last night and again i don't know why people it's interesting because people should focus on the blood moon more when they're when they're saying oh what about the jupiter's moons what about this what about that i'm going so the blood moon doesn't bother you because technically the blood moon shouldn't exist if we, on a flat earth because supposedly the globe is supposed to be in between the two. But remember, it's one of my, also my five scientific points, which is the blood moon, it, you know, you see this wonderful, perfect curvature that goes over the blood, over, over the moon. And remember, if, if you believe in how the condensed shadows work, remember the, the blackout zone for the, the Great American Eclipse was 70 miles wide. And that works in a flat model because the moon is so small, right? But the globe models say, well, it's condensed down. Well, if that's the case, then the, moon, the Earth passing in front of the sun should cast a shadow that's four times wider. So 240, 250 miles on the moon. And it should have a blackout. That, that's how big the blackout zone should be. 250 miles, which should be easily spotted on the moon. It should look, it should make the moon look like an eyeball. And we don't see that. We just see this wonderful curved red surface, uh, you know, as, as it goes, you know, this, this, uh, obscurement of the moon and we don't see that that blackout zone in the middle of it why why don't we it should be there uh, it's we don't we never ever see it why isn't the moon an eyeball just saying okay let's do a couple more and then wrap this thing up uh this one's called watch something else happens on january 21st 2019 during the blood moon on youtube yep i'm gonna get a few more of these blood moon things today uh watch something else yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's on youtube uh we're east coast watch this tonight the eclipse of the moon from bright full moon to dull red moon at midnight then back to full moon again the video i got uh from our insightful christian friend kermit yep again if people want to run stories and say oh flat earthers in the blood moon great more power to them because uh, it's just free press uh let's do one more let's do this one we'll end on this one this is a, a good one for me to rant on again this is another national geographic thing the national geographic flat earth video that's what it's called hi mark i have a question for you in the national geographic flat earth video where they launched a little rubber raft with a striped sign on it out into the water why was everyone fixed on the striped sign am i wrong in observing that yeah sure the stripes in the bottom were disappearing however the people in the boat behind them were all still still clearly visible is it just me or does it matter why could it not be possible the men were pushing the bear the banner down and that's why we still see them in the boat thank you kindly for your time lw okay yeah, the National Geographic thing, again, you've got to understand that National Geographic is a science-based channel. They are one of the biggest science supporters, and they have been since their inception. Oh, geez, how back does National Geographic go? Uh, the late 1800s, I think. 
They, you know, 100, 100 and something. I don't know how many years, 120 years at least. They've been around for a long, long time. They love science and they hate us. They really, really hate us. There was a reason why they got a hold of us. Uh, one, in fact, I remember the producer uh, that I talked to when he called me when I was up in um, Toronto at the film festival. He said the reason why, in fact, he hadn't even watched the documentary. The documentary wasn't even out yet. Uh, he had just watched the trailer for the documentary, and they had National Geographic had noticed the U.gov survey, which you you, got, you can look it up. Um, the U.gov survey, several different groups, including Fox News. Uh, covered the U.gov survey, which was a British scientific group, not us, a scientific group, one of their own. Uh, they polled 10,000 Americans, roughly, and said, hey, do you believe in the, you know all sorts of demographics? Do you believe in the globe? Do you believe in flat earth? And for the most part, it was you know, the two to three to four percent, depending on what demographic you're looking at, believed in the flat earth, which is pretty amazing. I mean, you got to remember that in the United States, even one percent is of three and a half million people. Well, no, there was a stat, though, that really, really jumped out, and that was the 18 to 24-year-olds, only um, uh, two-thirds believed in the globe, which meant a third of the 18 to 24-year-olds were, were believing in the flat earth, or they really had doubts in the globe, which follows the flat earth mantra, which is, okay, they don't know exactly what to believe in terms of the shape of they know it's not a globe. Well, that's a lot of people. I mean, that's way outside of the, the normal uh, deviation. Uh, you know, a third, 30, you know, over, over 30%, 35%. That's a lot of people, uh, especially in the young, and, and that's a group that's really, really scares them, you know, because 18 to 24, that's the future right there. These are people that are going from high school to university right now, and that freaked them out, and that's why National Ge Geographic got a hold of us. They were they're like, okay, we got to we gotta do something here. Maybe we can put our spin on it. Of course, they don't, or maybe they do realize that, that uh, most of your 18 to 24-year-olds don't watch National Geographic. It's an older person's show. I, I don't even watch it. Uh, it's it's more of a senior citizen show. I mean, yeah, there's a few people that watch it for various things, uh, but it's not as popular popular as it used to be. I mean, how many people actually subscribe to the magazine anymore? So that's what they were trying to spin this. They were trying to make flat earthers, um, and it's weird. I would I won't say they were trying to look, make them look dumb because the group that there's, if you know anything, I'll, I'll fill you on how production like this works. There's a field production team that just goes out and shoots as much footage as they can. Remember, they were shooting us for three days, and and you know they went to the meetup and we were at the hotel and we were at uh, the Salton Sea and we were talking, talking, talking. And then they take that footage and they, you know, that's the, and they just take the, the footage and they shoot it off to New York. And then that's out of their hands. They have nothing to do with the final production. So the people in New York are the main office of National Geographic. They're the ones that sit down and they chop it up. You know, they're the editors and they chop it up and, and try to spin it as best they could, which is why you heard nice music when they were talking to the uh, physicist out there at, um, in California who specializes in dark matter and dark energy, and they played menacing villain music when they were talking to myself. You know, they were trying, you know, we are the enemy of science, and of course, they were going to be doing that. Uh, I had no doubt, uh, you know, it's National Geographic. Uh, Discovery Channel would do the same thing. History Channel, eh, maybe. Part of it's because of ratings, but uh, yeah, they're worried. They're really, really worried. And they should be, because flat earth is not going to be stopped. It's just going to spread. And, and I'll, I'll end this particular episode on, on this. The reason why flat earth is going to just keep getting bigger and bigger is because it's easy. Even the term flat earth, two syllables, and you immediately know what you're talking about. It's like, wait, like literal flat earth. And then, you know, that all, that's all it has to do. Uh, all you have to do to plant the seed. And it's just going to get bigger and weirder and cooler. And you know, 2019 conferences all over the place. There's a conference in um, two conferences in the United States, three if you count the one that's going to be in North Carolina. Uh, hopefully that that'll get confirmed soon. There's one of being one in Toronto, one in the UK, one in the Netherlands, one in New Zealand that I just got confirmed for. I mean, these are conferences. You know, these are just the ones that they speak English at. There's flat, hundreds of flat earth regional meetups. Uh, and then there's all, you know, the countries that we don't even have really translations for. The flat, you know, on the Pacific Rim and, and uh, uh, the Soviet blocks uh, and India. And I mean, we're, it, flat earth is everywhere. And there aren't enough scientists to go around. It's not even that there aren't enough scientists to go around to fight this. 
it's that they don't have uh, arguments that are simple enough to defend science with anymore. They have put themselves up to, on such a pedestal with so many equations and so many complex explanations that now when Flat Earth comes, you know, yeah, remember the average person on the street, they want simple. They want instant gratification. They want something that's really, really easy to digest. And science isn't going to be able to give it to them, which is why National Geographic is having such a hard time. And they're going to in the future. Anyway, let's call this one good. Thank you guys uh, for emailing me all your questions. Remember, you can send those to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, stay flat.